times I fail, so your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, still I'm caught in your grace. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond.
Let's bow our heads. Father God, we are so grateful, Lord, that as we follow you, Lord, you bring us through, Lord, the way of salvation. You bring us through, Lord, the cross, Lord. You bring us to the other side, Lord, where there's grace and freedom from sin and forgiveness. You bring us to the other side, Lord, where there's trust, Lord God, and obedience, Lord, and blessing, Lord, for those who heed your word, God. We're so grateful, Lord, that you brought us. You brought us, Lord, not only to salvation, Lord, but life, but life evermore. Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, to be part, Lord, of your family. We're so grateful, Lord, to be called sons and daughters of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just pray today, Lord, as we worship you, Lord, as we uh, join our hearts together, as we, Lord, receive uh, new members and celebrate communion together, Lord. Father, your spirit moving among us, Lord. Touch our sore bodies, Lord. Touch the areas that are afflicted today, Lord God. Lift hearts to you, Lord. Lift countenances to you, Lord God. May we look to you, Lord, and none else, O oh God. For you, Lord God, are our help, Lord God. Yes, Lord. You are our foundation, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our provision, Lord God. Lord God, you are our all in all, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Even as we just sang, Lord God, we surrender, Lord. Truly, Lord God, it is the battle within, Lord God. We need to surrender, Lord, because you have what we need, Lord God. So we are grateful, Lord, to be here today as your children, Lord. Grateful to be family today. Grateful to celebrate the family of God today. We worship you. We glorify you. All God's people said, Amen. I'm going to ask you to sit down. I know right now. It's great to be with you this morning. I locked it so you don't All right. God bless you. It's good to be with you today. It is a special day, not just because we're together, although that is wonderfully special. But this is a special Sunday because we're going to welcome new members who have committed themselves to the life of this church. And how exciting it is. Now you just heard a passage reading from uh, the 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where Paul wrote to the Corinthian church because they had a problem. How many of you might know what that problem was? A couple of you? The Corinthian church, although they all said that they lacked nothing in spiritual gifts, I mean, they could speak in tongues, they could stand on their head, they could, uh, you know, swing from the chandeliers, they could do all, the, all these great things. And they had wisdom and miracles and all kinds of things going on in their church. And yet they had one huge problem. Do you know what that was? It was division. And Paul wrote this letter for many reasons. Actually, every chapter he deals with a different problem. <laughs> But in chapter 11, he hits the problem of division again. After chapter 1, he hits it. After, in chapter 11, he deals with it. And then in chapter 12, he gives us a marvelous picture of what God wants the church to be. How many of you would say, you know what? I want to be a part of the vision and the desire that God has for his church. You want that? I want that desperately. And years ago, when Trish and I came to Glad Tidings in this community, we had one ambition, that was to securely establish the body of Christ in this local church, this local community. That Christ's body, his family, would be joined together into one purpose, in one vision, one, one mission. And so Paul said to the church in Corinth, he said, look, the body, or the church, is like the body. Most of you walked here today. I rolled, okay? Um, and since I've lost my legs, use of my legs and feet and that, I look at them every day. I have to move them. My, my arms and hands have to do the work that my, hand, my feet and legs used to do. Let me tell you, you want your legs and your feet. All right? They move you around much more easily than your hands do. Um, maybe when I was a young kid, I could have done it with my hands, but now it's a little difficult. But I've, since I've had this change in my life, I've come to appreciate my body even more. 
and I have actually spoken my leg and thanked them for all the years of hard work that they did. Amen. Uh, really, uh, tirelessly. Uh, I just, you know, I beat them, poor things. <laughs> and my feet, you know, uh, they got me around, up and down ladders and all around and doing things. And I love to walk and, and go through. You know, I love to hike. You like to hike? Uh, yeah, I like to hike. I love, you know, and I could hear the water running out there. We got a little bit of rain, so I guess the water's really running out there next to the church. Oh, what a beautiful sound. And all that, and now to go in the woods is a whole other thing because I don't have my legs. So, you see, every part of the body is important. This was Paul's message to the Corinthian <coughs> church because they were dividing themselves out. They said, well, you're not like me. I'm a little different from you. And actually, there were people in the church saying, I don't need you. I want you to look at your neighbor, no matter how funny they look. <laughs> and I want you to say to them, I need you. <laughs> All right, okay. Now look at the person and tell them the truth, though. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. You need them. And I know I'm a broken record, but... When you get to my age, you start repeating yourself. All right? You cannot live the Christian life by yourself. Amen. I'll say it again because some of you are thinking about dinner or something. You cannot live the Christian life by yourself. You belong to the body. Now, Paul the Apostle, I'm just going to give you a quick sketch of what you heard already in the text. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, Paul talks about the body. And he says, look, we are all, we have all been baptized into one, one body. All right? Baptized into one body. What is that? Well, it's spiritual talk. If you were water baptized, that is the indication that you identify your life as a follower of Jesus Christ. And you are going to follow Christ for the rest of your life. And so you were baptized into him, into faith in him, to be one of his followers. At that moment, you became a member of Jesus Christ's family. You became a part of the family of God, and you are a member of Christ. Amen. All right, that does not make you a member of a local church, although we are members of Christ. That's the spiritual body. But uh, in case you look at these chairs that are yet still empty, those are filled with spirits that are yet to be born into the family. All right? Uh, but we understand that, that this is a spiritual family, first. Secondly, Paul says, you were brought into uh, not only one body, but one baptism. So he's teaching us that, that every person who becomes a Christian must be water baptized. This is a command of Christ. It's not like optional, like check here or don't check here. This is something that we do to follow Jesus. If you've not been water baptized, I'd love to talk to you. Or you say, well, I was baptized as a child and I don't even remember it. And I want to follow Jesus in believer's baptism. Still talk to me, okay? The third thing he says is that you've been brought into one body, one baptism, and then one spirit. Now this is an interesting thing. We we'll talk at length about this, but the Holy Ghost, the third person of the God being, literally comes and lives within you. This is a mystery. But this is what makes us all a part of God's family. It's because God comes and lives in us. Okay? And how many of you know that you don't elect your brothers and sisters? You don't decide who your brothers and sisters are. All right? You didn't decide who your parents were either. Right? All that was decided for you. And the scripture indicates that this is a sovereign work of God. If God has chosen you to love you, to throw his arms around you, and to bring you into his family, don't come kicking and screaming. Come joyfully, willfully, thankfully, into God's family 
And then realize that once you're a part of that family, you have brothers and sisters. Now look at them and say, I love you. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and tell them, tell them, I love you. I love you in Christ. All right? You're a member of Christ. Now, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you're a member. You are a member of the church of Jesus Christ. The second thing Paul talks about is about being joined in a family in a local church. This is where a lot of folks get mixed up and they need to reread what Paul taught because this isn't my teaching, this is the Apostle Paul's teaching, okay? Apostle Paul taught this next, he said, but our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. Ooh, <laughs> the NI, NLT. God has put all these parts just where he wants them. That means placement is in your future. God's will for you is to be placed in relationship to other Christian people. That's what church membership is all about. It's about being integrated, sewn together, knitted together in love, coming to, together in unity. Now Paul tells us in other passages and, and uh, also in Corinthians, that means that we should all speak the same thing. We should behave in a way that honors each other. And he, he goes on to teach us, he said, look, if you are together uh, and, and, and you are placed together in relationship, then you are going to show honor, dignity, you're going to live in harmony, he said, you're going to care for each other, and if someone suffers, you're going to suffer with them. And then he concludes with this, therefore all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you are a part of it. Now, I don't know any clear teaching that could possibly be given, but God wants you to share in membership in a local congregation. Now, some of you might say, well, you know, I'm just passing through. That's all right. You find your niche. You find out where God's taking you. Others might say, well, you know what? Really, I don't know as I believe exactly like you believe. Well, you know what? There's a lot of room in a big house. Okay? And it's true, you need to follow Christ. We're following Christ. We have little differences, but those need to be brought down to a minimum. And we need to bring up to a maximum the things that we do agree on. How's that? Amen. You know, there's a lot of churches out there that you can join, you can be a part of, but the fact is, the local church is God's answer for your growth and development. And it excites me today that we have uh, a new membership roster here today, and I'm going to ask Brother Tim, would you just come over and give me this list? I need to be able to read them. Um, my memory's not that good. After all, I fell on my head. <laughs> I use that excuse all the time now. For years, yeah. For years, I didn't have that excuse. Now I have it. It works great. I'm just going to ask that our, our new members will come and stand with me, well, kind of figuratively speaking, uh, come and stand with me. Um, I'm going to name them off, so Tim's excited and I'm excited with him. Um, first of all, we're going to invite Marie Alexander. that um, you hold your applause because I want you to just scream and shout for all of them, okay? okay. All right. And this will economize our time. Let's have Heather Burlingame come up. Heather Burlingame. <laughs> I know you want to <laughs> Lorraine Dawson, who was a member of our church years ago, and she's now returned. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Hey, Lorraine. Yes. Sandra Garnon. 
Dennis Marshall, uh, Mer Dennis Russo. Dennis, I want to talk to you later. You got way too many letters in your name. I know. <laughs> I can shorten that way down. <laughs> <laughs> Heidi Norberg. Hello, oh, Heidi. Stephen Sue Santagata. Scambato, sorry. That's my eyesight now. Please go. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. You can't hear me. Bless you. You know what? Steve is here this morning. Steve, give them an announcement. Tell them what happened. Well, I had a uh, CAT scan a week ago, and then when I saw the doctor Friday, he said I was <laughs> cancer free! Sometimes it takes us a little bit more work to figure that out because we don't always have it automatically. But when we find it, what a joy comes to our life. And I know that God has a purpose for each of you. I'm going to give you the apostolic charge. This is not from me. Again, this is from the Apostle Paul. And he wants you to know these things about membership. All right, so I'm going to read it. To God's church in Northern Rhode Island. That's us. <laughs> To you who have been called by God to be his own possession, he made you holy by means of Jesus Christ, just as he did it for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. I thank God for you and for the gracious gifts he has given you, now that you belong to Christ. Through Jesus Christ, his church is enriched in every way. We have every spiritual gift we need as we eagerly wait for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He will keep us strong to the very end, so we will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus returns. God will do this, for He is faithful to do what He says, and He invited us into partnership with His Son. So I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. 
Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united through purpose and thought. Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then discover true happiness by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with singleness of mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. That's important. Be humble, putting others before yourself. Don't only look out for your own interests, but take interest in the needs of others. You must have the same attitude that Jesus had when he said, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God, and anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. We who are strong in faith must be considerate of those who are weaker. We must not please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For not even Christ lived to please himself. So may God, who gives you patience and encouragement, help you to live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Jesus Christ. Then all of you can join together with one voice to bring praise to glo and glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you, so that you, so that God will be glorified through you. All praise and glory be to God through our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. These are very important words from the Apostle and Christ, and we do well to take heed to them. I'm going to invite all of you to stand with us. We're going to lift up the seven affirmations. These seven doctrine, doctrinal truths were presented in Ephesians chapter 4. If you want to look in your Bible where Paul quotes them, they were probably the words to a hymn or a, 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 a statement that they gave as a testimony to the faith. If you members, you members want to turn around to read with us, we're going to read them together and I will lead you in the affirmations, all right? Here we go. There is only one body of saints, all the church, in Christ, in Christ Jesus, is the builder and head. There is only one spirit, while we are rescued from sin, regenerated within, raised to life, and reconciled with the Father. By the Spirit, we are born into the family of God, empowered for service, and equipped with supernatural gifts. By Him alone, can we manifest the fruit of Christ's character. There is only one hope to which we have been called, while together we await the appearing of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our resurrection to eternal life with Him. There is only one Lord who is worthy to reign over all the earth and the heavens. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is only one faith bringing salvation by the grace of God. The Lord's Supper is a perpetual memorial of claiming our shared faith in the substitutionary work of Christ, the power of His gospel, and the prophetic glory of His coming kingdom. There is only one baptism confirming our union with Christ, His atoning death, the power of His resurrection, and the authority of Jesus' name, and our participation in His church. There is only one God, the Father of all the people, by whose sovereign pleasure and power we live, our love is saved, saved, guaranteed eternal life, and adopted, and adopted into the inheritance of his beloved Son, Son Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Remain standing. I'm going to ask that our, our uh, leaders will come and stand behind these 
new members. If you are a leader in the church, will you please come at this time? I'm going to ask that we are going to pray over our new members as we welcome them. And if you are a member of the church and you want to just come and stand behind anyone here, you're welcome to do that. We welcome people to come and, and, uh, and uh, stand with our new members. Everyone can come, so keep that in mind. But this is good, isn't it? This is good. Think of what God has in mind. Does that thrill you? I'm thrilled just thinking about what God has in store for us because we love Him. Father, today we are joined with these new members. We put our hands upon them as, as a testimony of faith that God, you are in their lives. You have anointed them. You have called them into this fellowship and into this local church. God, that you want to use their talents. You want them to grow. You desire that they would be would be planted with roots and that they would bear fruit unto eternal life. And Lord, that they would provide shade for the weary, that they would provide fruit for the hungry. And Lord, that they would give of themselves to the ministry of caring and loving one another. And God, we're not all eyes, we're not all hands, we're not all feet. We are each members of the body, different parts, having different functions. But Lord, you have promised to give honor and dignity to each part, and that there would be mutual concern and care for one another as you move in our lives. God, we pray that you would help them be fully planted, fully and faithfully raised up and enriched in their life. And God, may they be able to say, uh, I joined this church, but God, you did, you brought me here. You brought me into this relationship. You brought me into this fellowship, and I'm committed to help them grow. Father, we pray that you would make us all fruitful for the glory of God, that sinners will know that there is a God of love who forgives, that there would be people whose lives are changed by these individuals who are standing here today. We pray in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Amen.
to begin a time of communion service here today. What a joy it is to come into God's house. I want you to know, first of all, of most importance, as we heard from Paul the Apostle in 1 Corinthians 12, chapter 11, he talks about the importance of participating in this meal. One of the words that you might have heard at Glad Tidings before, if you've been around a while, is the word koinonia. You know what that word means? It means participation. Participation. And the reason Jesus died on the cross was so that you could participate and be a partaker of eternal life. So that you would have your sins forgiven and you would be a part of his eternal plan. Now, this is what we call an open communion table. Open. That means God invites you to come. Jesus paid the price for every one of you to come. You say, well, you know what? I'm not a member of Glad Tidings yet. That's all right if you're a member of the body, the spirit body that we talked about. Christ lived in you. Then you belong to that family. Amen. Amen. All right, you belong. I think I might just have died. Uh, I'm there again. Okay. You belong to the family because you were baptized into one spirit. And so you're a part of God's church. Even though you're not a member at Glad Tidings. That's that's good finding your place. But when you are born into God's family, you, you do so through faith. And there's only one requirement when you come to this table. And that is simple faith that Jesus died on that cross for you. That he died to forgive your sins, to cleanse away your sins. And you might say, well, I don't really understand all of that. You don't have to really understand all of that. But you must believe that Jesus died for you. If you believe that you're a member of Christ's family and you are welcome to this table, I'm going to ask that we can pray. And then I'm going to invite our, uh, our helpers to come. Father, thank you that you love us and that you have opened the door through Jesus Christ so that all of us might enter in and have eternal life. And Lord, today may be the day that a, a person here walks the aisle for the first time to say, I want to belong to God's family. And Lord, I pray today that you'll be born in their heart. Today, through faith, they will come the way of the cross and say, I believe Jesus died to forgive my sins. And I want to participate in his church. And I want to belong to his family. God, today I pray that this table will reach out and welcome everyone who's lost, who is bound by sin, who has grief in their life, who has struggled, Lord, with problems. God, today is a day of freedom. Lord, we praise you. We thank you, God. Because none of us are worthy. You made us worthy by your grace. Today, Lord, we welcome with open arms your family, the Church of Jesus Christ at this table. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all stand with me? I invite the ushers to come or the... Uh, <laughs> Pastors to come and help us. If that Beth is coming. Amen. Okay, we're right there. And we're all going to make a single file down the middle aisle. So if you're on the side, you just come right straight through to the middle aisle. And uh, 